Did you get triggered again? Or did you see that other person get triggered? Wow. Why are we so out of control with emotions? Like really, what's going on here? Well, I'm here today to teach you and train you why people are out of control with this. Let's make the change today. Okay, it happened again. You had this emotional reaction. Somebody triggered you and wow, why are your emotions out of control? Like what's happening? Uh, I'm here to help you right now understand what just happened. And I know you think it's the other people. You think somebody else needs to change and they need to be different. Your spouse needs to be different. Your kids need to be different. And you were going nuts because everybody else needs to change so that you can be calm. Nope. Sorry to break it to you. There's not enough people in the world that can change that can help you be calm. This is about you. Yeah, it's about you. And it's about what's going on inside of you. Now, I totally understand this. I was in a place in my life where I literally was pointing at different people around me and just wishing and wanting the day to happen that that person will change. This person will change. These people will change so that I could be okay. And you might be doing the same thing. And I just want to save you some time because that's never going to happen. People cannot change enough to be able to help you feel calm and safe on the inside. The reason why is, is because this, this emotional trigger that happened and there was this outburst and you were loud and you cried and you maybe yelled at someone and, and now you regret it and you wish you would never have done it and you feel out of control. Well, you can feel out of control because something is inside of you that is controlling you. And I want to help you know what that is. You know, there's a difference between reacting and responding to things. Reacting actually means to relive. So to react means to relive. And if you are having a reaction to people, like being triggered or have an emotional burst or an emotional outbreak or a breakdown, you have inside of you some past experiences that you are still reliving. You see, not all of our past is finished. We have some things in our past as people that is still going on inside of our mind. We still feel hurt about things that happened five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. We still feel hurt over those moments. And there are things that have happened in our past that are literally like a broken record playing over and over and over again on the inside of us. And when those things play over and over again inside of us like a broken record, that emotional feeling you felt clear back then, all those years ago, is just building ever so slightly every day. It just builds, 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 and then someone triggers you and you unload. And then you wonder, where did all that come from? Why did I just do that? You see, the common person does not study their past. Most people are just trying to deal with today. They don't even know how to go into their past and clean up. They don't even know how to go into their past and patch things together and and kind of finish things that have happened in their past. But you, like a lot of people, have some things in your past that is unfinished. And when it's unfinished, it just plays over and over and over again, and it builds up all that emotion without you even seeing it. And then a child, your spouse or a friend does something and they just did it the right way to trigger you and then boom, you blow up with all that emotion. And you see the pattern, don't you? 
And just when you thought you have it all handled, there you go again, you unloaded your emotions. And then you start to feel bad after a while that you're actually starting to hurt people with your emotions and those things that you say. If you're married, your spouse takes the brunt of it. If you've got kids, they then get the rest of it. And then you hate on yourself because you know you're hurting them. And then you feel really, really super bad. And then the emotion stacks back up and then you get triggered again and then it happens again. You're caught in a really weird cycle. I know, I completely understand where you're at. And, and it's not fun. It's not fun. But the reason why it's out of control and why your emotions are out of control is because you're in this react or relive kind of a cycle. So what do you do? You know, how do you, how do you break this cycle so you can start to have some control of your emotions? Well, somewhere in your past, there are experiences that you've had that still irritate you, still bother you, still bug you, that still is creating some conflict and some pain inside of you. Now, there is a way that you can get involved with your past and be able to start to patch or mend things from your past. And I know you're gonna hear this answer and you're gonna go, wait a minute, I, I, I don't know if that's gonna work. It's called journaling. I know, how many times have you heard this answer in your life like journal? Let me just share it with you one more time. Journaling is going to save your life. Journaling is going to change your life. Journaling is going to unlock your future. It's gonna help you be less triggered and it's gonna help you not damage your children and damage your spouse as much as you're doing it right now. But it's time for you to journal. And why, why am I bringing up journaling? Journaling, there's so many different ways to journal. So many things to journal about. This is not the kind of journal where you're writing down what happened today and what you ate for lunch and what you ate for dinner. That's not what you're doing with this journaling. What you're doing with this journaling is you are looking for those experiences that need some attention so that you can write about what happened. Sometimes we have things happen in our life and it doesn't make sense and then we just push it aside. But we're in charge of our life. And when our life is in shambles behind us and we just leave it, it's still a mess. It's still going to cause messes. Messes in our past create messes in our present. Messes in our past create messes in our present. So. The more you decide to journal about what's going on inside you, and this is how you do this. You get a journal, you open it up, and you begin to write down how you think and feel about your life. And as you write down about how you think and feel about your life each day, you start to then ask yourself the question, I wonder what has happened in my life that has caused me to feel hurt. I wonder what's happened in my life that has caused me to feel frustrated. I wonder what's happened in my life to cause me to feel scared. I wonder what's happened in my life that's caused me to feel so out of control. And if you were to approach your journal with those kinds of questions, as you journal for 15 minutes each day, as you journal for 15 minutes each day and you ponder like this and you're writing down how you think and feel about life and you start to use those questions I just gave you to think about your past, your mind will bring to you what is hurting you. Your mind knows what's killing you. Your mind knows exactly what is damaging you and destroying you on the inside and it wants it out. It's just waiting for you to be interested in getting these painful things out of you. It wants to help. It's not gonna hide it and block it and make it all think like it's all gone. It's gonna help you. Your mind wants to stay alive. It does, it wants to stay alive. And so if you were to journal and get a journal and, and for 15 minutes, 
Just write down what you think and feel. Because you're trying to find, where am I reliving stuff from the past? Where am I reacting? And you're looking for this. And as you ponder on those questions that I just gave you just a moment ago, and as things come to you, you just write it in your journal. Writing in your journal helps you make sense of things. Helps you sort things out. Helps get it out onto paper. Helps you organize it. Anytime we need to organize our life, we do it on paper. And it makes sense. It's in front of us. And when you decide to take charge and start to look into yourself through this type of journal writing, you are going to get your past organized. You will. You'll get your past organized one day at a time, 15 minutes at a time. You will start to make sense of why you are triggered, why you, what you've been reliving. And as you journal and find different situations inside of you, you may find the next step to be really important. And then what that next step is, is to forgive people and to forgive yourself. And if you hang around me long enough, you're going to hear me say it's a really important and it is a must that you are reading a book about forgiveness. Read a book about forgiveness. And when you finish that book about forgiveness, you read another book about forgiveness. And then when you're done with that book, you read another book about forgiveness. But something that's going to help you with your past is to understand forgiveness. Because you're going to find stuff in your past of, Oh yeah, I should really forgive that person or I need to forgive myself for what happened. But a past that is messy is going to keep you in a cycle of reacting and reliving the hurt, the conflict, the pain, the discouragement, the frustration. And as you relive that, it all stacks up inside of you and then you're going to unload on your spouse or your kids again or you're going to implode and break down. It's inevitable. It's not a mystery. You're going to go through the whole cycle again. 15 minutes of journaling each day about how your life is going in this react, relive place, and then pose the questions I gave you just a little bit ago. So you opens up your mind and you're going to find situations that need forgiveness applied. That's the magic right there. It's the magic right there. Clean up your past, you'll be triggered less. Clean up your past, you'll be more in control. Clean up your past and you will feel much more confident about who you are today. The 15 minutes of journaling in that direction and you're reading a book about forgiveness and then when you finish that one, you read another book about forgiveness but you get to understand what forgiveness is all about and it's time for you to get your past organized. No more, no more wondering why your emotions are out of control. You are not a victim to it anymore. You now are responsible and you're going to take action on this and do something about it today. That's what I think needs to happen. You're not an out of control person. You're just stuck in a loop of reliving your past. Go get your book on forgiveness and get your journal and start journaling today and enjoy how you're going to feel. You can make a change. Wow. Right? Great topic. Ooh, sensitive, but important. Very, very important. Okay. Here's something I can do to help you from this point on. There's a link right here that'll take you to an option of training called Master My Thoughts. And it is a program that I've designed to help you to be able to get inside here and literally organize yourself from the inside out. Click on the link, see if it's a fit for you and jump in on that program. It's an online program. You can take it from anywhere in the world. Uh, but I did this for you so that you can get your life organized. Um, the second thing is subscribe. Thanks for watching the video. I've got more great training coming to you, but you got to subscribe so I can send each one of these videos to you. Subscribe. And thank you for watching the video. I really, really, really hope that this helped you and helped you probably understand somebody else that's going through this. 
That's what I'm here for. 